Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. I'm sure you've got your side of the story of why you were hurt, mm -hmm. but nobody took care of that little eight-year-old boy to make sure they both had the mother and father in that picture. Yeah. It's yeah. that simple, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, I've lived with that. I think I got hypnotized not long ago when we brought up that scenario. And that's probably mm -hmm. where my fear of unknown or fear of mm -hmm. belonging has probably come from a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. You said about having that conversation with your parents. You did say with mm -hmm. your mother, but earlier you said parents. Mm -hmm. um, how did they react? Uh, was that a difficult conversation? or And if it was or wasn't, how did they react to you being open vulnerable and honest with them it's it's been a journey of learning how to uh honor their minds while yeah is that why you've called it honoring minds perhaps yeah I, I guess they've been my they've been a really important learning experience for me they have been very valuable teachers in this space for me um so uh, it, it has been a delicate dance of knowing how to honor their minds and validate their experiences because they have their own uh, life experiences that they bring to parenting me. Um, trauma? Not that you yeah. have to go into it, but do they, do yeah. they have their own trauma? Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, that generation and, and that generation of... Um, you know, children are seen and not heard, and um, uh, um, you. Th there was no honouring minds of children back in, back in the generation they were raised in, um, and and they both came from you know tough working class families. Um, my dad, in particular, he he's incredibly. I respect what he has done so much for me and my sister because. He took us out of. Uh, he could have. He could have repeated what was done to him, and he very consciously chose not to. Not to parent us, or discipline us, or punish us in the same way that he was, because he um, he knew he needed to end that cycle. So um, he, he, you know, he. He's a very hard worker. He spent a lot of time working when I was growing up. And I think he acknowledges that now. He has acknowledged that now that he just really wasn't there much. Because uh, he was working. You know, he was a provider. So it was at that that's generation. That's the old days, isn't it? That's the that's way right. they did it in the old days. That's yeah. right. And then the mother was left doing all the child raising. Um, and, yeah, so it's been a journey of learning how to navigate uh, respecting their minds while also having space for my own. And um, I think we've, we've, we've gotten to a point now where we can have these conversations. And I, I you know, I respect my mum deeply as well because she just doesn't have the capacity that I have to, to empathise and to, to, be really warm and and to be and to be vulnerable. Um, so for us to have these conversations together, she will she will listen to me now and and go, yeah, I get it. Yeah, that would have been hard, you know. Like so, she has come such a long way. Um, and maybe I think I think being grandparents has really helped them access more parts of them themselves that they just couldn't access before. Um, so yeah, it's been a journey of navigating all of the minds of the family. You, I think, yeah, you're right. I think honoring their minds, if you hadn't or didn't, or don't honor their minds, you would just instill anger forever. Yeah. Well, the other options are you remain in this, this bitterness mm, yeah, and this exactly. relationship of, 
almost blame and mm. f- frustration and unmet needs like you're always still expecting them to be different and then they, they just can't be they're not or your other option is I just I you disconnect completely and like see a later relationship so um there it's been a a journey of of navigating that and mm. um I feel like I'm in a really good place with that now and 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 I'm able to honor their minds whilst honoring my own and honestly I think having children has really helped in that space. Yeah. So it sounds like you have a really great relationship now. It's it's um it, it's it's a it's a very it's a respectful relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So coming from childhood then, um, mm. you, the next stage of your life, um, before you get hit, um, well, if I'm looking at your ages from our pre-chat, it was probably before you started your professional career, um, you were quite young. You entered into a relationship. Yes, I was 16. Yeah. And you were with that person for quite a long time. And in that age, that's that's a very long time, isn't it? You... Yeah, it wasn't until one of my colleagues pointed out that we were together for nine years, so 16 to 20, 25 or 26. I think I was just turning 17, actually. So it was like 16 to 20, 17 to 26, around that age. But yeah. one of my colleagues pointed out, like, gosh, that's a really influential time of your identity for me yeah. and your development. And I thought, yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So what was um what was that relationship like for you? Um I think the relationship had this dynamic of me trying to change him or help him or uh uh parent him, I guess in some way, which would have felt awful for him at the time too because he was very impulsive and um he was um just just a typical teenage boy who just yeah. wanted to run a bit of a muck um still 25 right <laughs> yeah 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 and um you know it was a it wasn't a very healthy relationship um and if he was here would he say the same thing yeah yeah i think so um yeah. I think so. Maybe with a little less self awareness. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. I, I think so. I, I don't know. We haven't spoken since we've separated, so um, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't know. But um, I think he would acknowledge that. I, I always, I always would say to him, I feel like we're a square in a circle trying to fit together, like. We are committed to each other, but it's just not working. And my dilemma was, was because we'd been together for so long, our, again, connection for me, I really loved his family, like our, and our friends, like everything was so, our lives were so entwined Mm. that I didn't want that to end. Um, I felt scared. I felt scared of my life changing. Uh, it was predictable, even though it didn't feel nice a lot of the time, but it was familiar. Yeah. I didn't want it to change because that would take a lot more courage to yeah. step out of that and create a new life. We 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 somehow go, our by minds and body always want to be comfortable, don't they? And don't face, that's the, well, that's another problem that we face in modern society. We don't want to be uncomfortable and that's where problems happen don't don't they but yeah so that, i suppose you needed to go through that relationship to probably understand the the deep value valued relationship deep i'm gonna get my, my words muddled up deep emotional attachment that you to have your current husband lj so you 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 lash you 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 left your partner you separated uh at 25 uh 26 yeah. and you, that's when you kind of walked into to the relationship with L, lj is that right yeah, so me and my ex, we were engaged. And um, as the wedding was approaching, it got to about 18 months, 12 months out. 
well, 12 months was when we ended the relationship. So it was starting to brew for me. I always had questions. Am I with the right guy? Like I always had a question about hmm. the relationship. Oh, so you were actually and getting married. It was booked. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Um, because it was the next thing to do, right? Like it was yeah. 26 now. I've graduated from uni. I've got a career. It's the next thing to do. Did you have a dog? Um, we had a dog. Oh, yeah, there you go, see. <laughs> yeah. The we, had, we, had, we bought a house. <laughs> like we had, I'd followed that, the plan. And because my closest friends were following the same plan, I, I didn't want to deviate from that. I didn't want to be very different. Like I'd always, I wanted it to stay the same. And then I started to feel really like, like I I just started to feel really nauseous all the time and would go to the doctor for blood tests and wonder, you know, they'd say there's nothing, nothing, that they couldn't find anything wrong. I just, I just felt sick in the core of my stomach that I, something was wrong. And, um, I wrote, I had, a, and she's still one of my closest mentors today. One of my colleagues was a psychotherapist, is a psychotherapist, and she's a fair bit older than me. I, I would guess she'd say she's almost like a mother figure. She's a maternal figure in my life. Mm-hmm. And I would, um, I'd go to her and she'd see me at work and, I'd, and she'd say, what's wrong? And I'd say, oh, I just, I just don't feel well. And. I was starting to have all these downs and um, she'd say, Cheryl, your body's speaking to you. And I'm like, you need to pay attention. Mm. What what could it be trying to tell you? And, um, you know, she was a very embodied practitioner, so she did a lot of yoga and, and understanding of how things affect, how the body does speak to us. And um, eventually I ended up having a conversation with my ex and said, I don't know what you're feeling, but this is how I'm feeling. And I, I, I think we just need to have a break or something. As the wedding's getting closer, people, and it was going to be a destination wedding, people, we're going to start letting people down. You know, they're going to start losing money. And, and when it started to mm. turn into an impact on other people and then thinking, I want to have kids as well and I don't want to bring children into this kind of relationship dynamic so when I started to think beyond me and the impact it was having on other people, plus me, like, is this is this what I want for my life? Is this how I want to feel? Um, and I realized, no, I don't. So we had this conversation and we mutually agreed to separate. And um, initially, again, a bit of a safety measure was we'll separate for 12 months and then, like, reconnect in 12 months and see where we're both at. Um, but... Um, that was never going to happen. It was. <laughs> I hate to say it was never going to happen. <laughs> no, I, was I, think, right. <laughs> I think I just needed the, um, the, the idea. Do you know, I still remember, <laughs> I still remember I, when I moved out, I actually moved into the house of my, the receptionist of where, of where I was working at the time, her house. She's this beautiful, warm woman who had two two teenage girls and she's like, come and stay with me. And I moved out there. And I remember the first night I, 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 um, I stayed there. I could not sleep that night. I was like, my brain was just like going and going and going. And I was thinking, I feel this huge sense of freedom that I've never felt before in my life. Like it felt exhilarating. And I just felt like I got, oh my gosh, like this, my, my life is now open. And I did not expect to feel that way the yeah, first wow. time sleeping away from the home that, you know, I was, yeah. You built, it was, yeah. So my body then just like, yeah, you've done it. Yeah, this is it. And um, wasn't long after that LJ came into my world. Yeah. Not part of the plan, Andy. I wanted to go like, I wanted to go on Kentucky tours. I wanted to just have you could, fun. <laughs> you could have still done that. You could have still done that. But, I mean, it, it's funny because that uh, that whole um, well, let's separate for the year is kind of the modern version of it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Yeah. It's a, it's a safety, it's a safety mechanism, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I've never done this before. It, it, you and LJ is the first time, but I think it's a good time for us to introduce LJ, not to plug him or anything, but I'm, a, I'm actually interviewing LJ um, a week yeah. on Saturday. And um, how you talk, I, what I want you to do now, just briefly for a, a minute or two, because obviously it's not about LJ, it's LJ's time next week. Uh, everyone will get to know LJ. But you, you said to me on our pre-chat that I should interview LJ. Can you tell us and the viewers of why I should interview LJ next week? Oh, he is without giving most... too much away, obviously. I I don't I haven't met a more remarkable transformational person in my life than my husband. Transfer transformational from what sense to where he is now? To broken and lost mm -hmm. to whole and enlightened like he it's it's remarkable he he's a different person on a cellular level yeah mm -hmm. i love how you say that because i talk about cellular levels all the time and um you, you, you we're going to come back to you, but the one thing about the, um, the conversation I had with LJ that's really stuck out in my mind ever since, he be he believes he wasn't meant to be born in this time. He believes he was meant to be in the time of warriors. And I just, yeah. I, I can't wait to dive into that with him. <laughs> oh, man. I just, I've done it on purpose. I've plugged that on purpose for, for people to make sure they come and tune back in because this is a, I've done a few family affairs. I've had Jake and Jess. The, my first episode, Jake with the cancer, running around Australia, arm wrestler of the world, commentating, and, and his wife, Jess, and the cancer journey there. And I've had a, a daughter and a father, the drummer and the basketball player. Um, I've had a bit of a family thing going on, and you're my next family. So you're my third family on low, I think. I've not, I don't think I've missed anybody out. I, th I, th I think you're my third one. I'm sorry if I've missed anybody out. I can't think in the moment, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm well, excited. He yeah it, it it will be a really great conversation and he's he definitely has a strong warrior lineage with the Samoan background yeah. so it's, yeah it's um and i that i that there's really a lot to be said for that it really runs dna deep like there's this mm. i see it in my son too yeah it's, yeah. it's fascinating yeah i'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna dive into some of the reiki stuff as well and uh all that energy stuff we, we we actually do some very similar things me and lj to prepare oh. ourselves yeah 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 i want to learn more about reiki i can't say i do that but uh am i saying that right reiki reiki yeah reiki yeah uh, so for those yeah. who are watching and listening don't know what that is tune in next week with lj <laughs> and myself but it's uh Sherelle's, uh husband um so yeah. we'll we'll welcome lj next week all right so Coming back to you then, um, mm. coming, you've met LJ, you've met LJ, you've married LJ and you've had your beautiful family. You two, it's intertwining with his story slightly, um, but you two have obviously, um, what did you two have to work on in order for your relationship to be successful? Because obviously you come from a breakup and he's coming from a bit of a space as well, isn't he? Yeah, well, he, he, was, <laughs> he was also coming out of a relationship too. And um, he he tragically lost his nephew, who um, yeah. around the same time that I was ending my relationship, and that created this, I guess, internal shift inside of him, where he realized he needed to leave the relationship he was in, hmm. and um, so we we connected shortly after that, and honestly, it was. <laughs> I remember being at the Hippie Club nightclub, which is a lit nightclub in Leaderville in Perth. And um, I remember we were we were out for his birthday because me and my one of my best friends, um, we we made him brownies for his birthday because it was not long after his nephew had passed, and we thought it was a nice thing to do. And he invited us to to head out with him and some some of his family. And um, we went out and um, I remember him, uh, I guess I had this way of connecting with people and I don't know if LJ had ever really experienced it before, but I remember him 
hold, grabbing my face in the middle of the dance floor going, why am I telling you this stuff? I never tell anyone. Like we were just having these amazing conversations and, um, and he was like, I just don't know why we're, why I'm, I'm opening up like this to you. And, um, it was probably from the, then on that we realized we have this really deep, uh, connection and with LJ, he worked, he used to work five, right? He worked, um, four weeks away. Mm. And I think it was a really nice way to start a relationship because we had to talk a lot. Um, we would talk and communicate often and have these really great conversations and um, sit with anxieties, you know, because my ex would kind of want to come back into the picture or his ex would want to come back into the picture and we have to sit with these anxieties of what's going to happen, like, and, and what's happening with us, like, and we just would, we kind of both, uh, which was very different for me. Usually in, in my last relationship, I was quite anxious ar around my partner and what he was up to and where he was. And I'd feel quite anxious all the time. But with LJ, I just kind of, uh, I felt safe enough just to, to see what happened. And um, we ended up having this beautiful, deep foundation of a really solid friendship of really good communication and um, of learning how to talk with each other in a way that we both felt really cared about. So I think for us, um, given his background and how he was raised, given uh, my background and how I was raised, we've always had to work out how to talk to each other in a way that is again, honoring his mind whilst honoring my mind. Um, Cause I, you know, if we've got a conflict that's happening between us, I want to solve it then and there, you know, I need to, cause I feel anxious otherwise, right. Based on my, my attachment history. He doesn't want to, he wants to not talk about it. He needs to calm himself down first. And if the more I want to talk, the more it, 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 it increases his stress response. So we have had to really navigate how to meet each other's needs. He needs some time, but I need some connection. So how do we navigate that together? Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.